is the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. David said, I was glad when they told me, let's go in the house of the Lord. And I feel and I think that the joy that fills us this morning. Amen. So you can offer a good offering to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms 139, verses 17, How precious are your thoughts towards us, O God! How vast is the sum of them that evil count them! They are much more than the sad of the sea. God values us, and has got precious thoughts towards us even this morning as we gather. The Bible says that his greatest portion is his people, Jacob, the lot of his inheritance. Amen. God values us, is so much concerns about us, and is ready to perfect that which concerns us this morning. Amen. So let's open our hearts, let's release ourselves before his presence as we worship him and ascribe all the glory and honor due to your name. So feel welcome, all of you who are watching us through the social media, we welcome you. Be part of our service this morning. May we be found of the Lord, people who worship him in truth and in the spirit as we declare, bless the Lord, O my soul, and know that is within me. Bless his holy name. Let's offer a good clap of ring to the Lord as we sing all of us this song together in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship is all meaning. Sing like never before, sing like never before, oh yes, oh my soul, I worship you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship is only name. Sing like never before, sing like never before, oh my soul. Sing like you mean it, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You can lift up your hands before the Lord. Just open up to the Lord.
Father, we bless your name this morning. We ascribe all the glory and honor due to your name, O oh God. We thank you. That how precious are your thoughts towards us, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them that if you would count them, they are much more than the sand of the sea. You've got a good plan concerning our very lives, O oh God. To give us peace, hope, and even an expected end. And we open our hearts to ascribe all the glory and honor due to your name, O oh God. As we declare that you're worthy of our worship. Receive all the glory and honor, our King. We bless your name.
life fast crying to the final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. Do you believe that this morning he's commanding your destiny? We are coming before him, before him this morning and telling him, thank you, Lord, Imela, for all that you have done for me and for who are in my, what you will continue to be in my life.
I'm hoping this morning the words of this song has sunk in your mind and in your heart. But if it is not by the grace of God, would I be alive this morning? It is by His grace that I'm alive. And it is also by grace that I am freed to worship Him this morning. Amen? Amen. It is the grace of God that frees you to worship the Lord in His presence until you tell Him, Imela, thank you, Lord, for your grace. Amen. We are telling the Lord this morning, because of this grace, Bwana hatuta abudu mungu mungine. Hatuta abudu miungu mungine. Ilio na mifano yeyote. Ila wewe peke. Uluya leo. Naleta sadaka za sifa kwa kobwana Heshima na mamlaka zipoke Mtakatifu, mtakatifu Na kuita mtakatifu Oh, yes, we went a Bye. 
Father, our God is promising that he will keep on doing great things to us. Do you believe that in this morning? Yeah, dance before the Lord and tell him that. Are you there? Stand where you are. Just stand. Thank you. I can see you. 
Thank you. Let us bow our heads and speak a blessing to these children, even as we go to Sunday school. Lovely Father. In Jesus' name. We thank you that we are here today. And even to remind ourselves that you keep on doing great things. We thank you for the children who came today. They woke up in the morning and said that they want to be in your presence. And here they are, oh God. Knowing there is quite a lot that could have deterred them. They could be in their beds. They could be seated watching programs. But they said they want to come into your house and be part of this fellowship. How much we glorify your name. And thank you. Even as we speak a blessing upon them that Lord these ones we pray that they'll quench their thirst in your heart that these ones will bring joy and glory to your holy name may they be blessed in their going out and their coming back may they be blessed as they sit to listen from you today we pray that, Lord, you anoint their teachers to speak your word to these ones, to nurture them in the right paths, the paths of righteousness. For this they have come today. In Jesus' name we pray and every parent say, Amen. Amen. Let us appreciate them even as they go to the, to the old church. So, yeah, you can start moving. Start moving. We thank God for today. And this being the second Sunday this year. And last week, last Sunday, we read from Psalm uh, that, the, uh, 23 that goes hand in hand with Ezekiel 34 that speaks about what God does. Leading us to cool waters, to green pastures, making, our, uh, making a table, preparing a table before our enemies, and this was all good. And I know you know the psalm. And now that the Lord is the leader and we are the sheep in his flock, I want to believe that it's until you hear his voice, then will you follow. And today I want us to pray about yielding ourselves surrendering ourselves to this master. And I want to believe that you are not one of those. When Peter began, he said, it is good that we have come to the house of the Lord. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I want to ask ourselves, are we one of those who are told, let us go to the house of God, and you are reminded every other time? Or you come because you have one, an appointment with this God. You know who he is in your life. You know what he means. And you come because you have given yourself to him. Do you come because you are reminded? Or because it is another Sunday? Or did you come today? Because 
you want to be in his presence. In 2 Samuel 23, we get a people who are called the mighty men of David. But we want to look at three, even before we pray and surrender ourselves to God, even as we begin this year. It is a period of surrendering. It is a period of looking to your covenant and all the agreements that you have made with your God. It is a time of remembering. It is a time of projection, projecting even into the future. We read of these three men who broke through the army of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, that is verse 16. But we start from verse 15. Nasema, David longed and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. At this time, David, they had gone to war. And he was in a stronghold, as verse 14 says. And the troop of the Philistines had encamped around Bethlehem. And it was during the harvest time. Harvest time, so it was sunny. It was summer. And they are in the wall. And from where David was, he longed for water from Bethlehem. And the Bethlehem is besieged. It is surrounded by the Philistines. And three of his men had him long. I think it was not meant for anybody's ears. It was just a longing. And David sounded the longing. And the three men had, and they penetrated the wall of the Philistines down to Bethlehem by the gate, by the gate, and they drew water for David and brought him. This morning, the Lord has been reminding me of total surrender. And I want to tell you it's until we know the thirst that our king has, the thirst in our Lord Jesus, that we are going to totally surrender to him and say, here I am, Lord, that you may use me. Look at the Samaritan woman. When Jesus met and the disciples had gone, when the disciples came back, they asked Jesus whether he had eaten. And what did he say? He said he was satisfied because he had eaten. And what did, had he eaten? Receiving this woman, the adulterous woman, back. And he said, my food is to do the will of God. Look at the woman at the well. Jesus is thirsty. And Jesus uh, asks for water. And the water he wanted is the life of this woman. It's not the physical water. Jesus was thirsting for this life. And he asked for water. And Jesus tells the woman, I am the living water. And this morning, I want to challenge ourselves. And we say that Jesus is thirsting even now. He's thirsting for your family. He's thirsting for that son. He's thirsting for that daughter. 
he is looking at them and saying, I died for that daughter. I died for that son and I'm thirsting. Jesus is thirsting for this church. He's looking at us seated and he has a longing and the longing it's only those who walk with him can hear that inner longing that is in Jesus. It is only those men who are so close to David that had the longing. Jesus is thirsting for Njoro. He is looking at every corner of this town and he's saying, I wish there's somebody out there who can see my thirst, who can surrender totally. And I work with him even to bring the estates of Njoro back to me. And he's thirsting for Kenya. He's looking at Kenya. He's looking at its economy. He is looking at the political uh, area. He is looking at our schools. He is looking at every area. And Jesus is thirsting. Are you there? And you are saying, yes, Lord. I want to yield so that you may work with me. I don't know why I am a remnant. I don't know why I am alive today if it is not for the will, if it is not to quench your thirst. And here we are, our Lord, bowing before you this morning. As a church, as parents, as citizens of this nation, and we are the remnants we are the people that are alive today. And we are the people that are reminded it is another day to go to the house of the Lord. We are the people that Isaiah talks about. A thirsty people. We are here, Lord, are people ready to surrender and to yield totally to you, to your call, to your leadership? We are here and we surrender ourselves to you this year because we desire to be used of you. We desire to be used of you, O oh Lord. Like the three men in David's time who had his longing and they risked their lives, penetrated the wall of the Philistine army just to bring drinking water to their master. We desire to do this, Lord. We desire to bring you our family members this year. We desire to bring you our families. We desire to bring you this church, Lord, to you. We desire that this church will grow even to the levels of worshiping you in truth and in spirit. We desire, dear Lord, to bring Joro even to obey you. We desire to bring our schools, our institutions, oh God, we desire to bring them to you. And this is why we come every morning, Lord, not just because we have been reminded but because we want to come before you in your presence and say, here, Lord, this is my family. I bring it to you, dear Lord, that they may be used of you. Here is Njoro, dear God. Unless you come through for this town, unless, Lord, men and women turn to you, Lord, we are saying, 
Joro is wanting. And we met here today to say, have Joro, O oh God, and have your way in this town. Have your way in the streets of Njoro. In those dens, dear Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way, dear Lord, in the businesses of Njoro. That they may bring glory and honor to you. Have your way in the administration of Njoro. Lord, have your way. We pray that righteousness and justice will be held high in Joro and also in our country, O oh God. We know that you are longing for Kenya. You are desiring for men. You are desiring for a church that will hear you are longing to bring Kenya to you, Lord. And here we are surrendering hands, Lord. Putting down every hindrance that which hinders each one of us from totally surrendering that we may faithfully bring to you the nations. We thank you so much. Even as the year continues, Lord, remind us our covenant with you. Remind us that we are in a better covenant where Jesus Christ is the mediator he is the high priest. He is the one interceding. All we need to do is to bring them. And you'll have your way in their hearts. You'll have your way in the work of their hands. You'll have your way, Lord, in all their endeavors. We give you praise. We give you honor. Even as you take over. Each one of us, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
service. This Paul who is writing This is Paul writing, and he is writing to the church in Galatia, more so because they were passing through extremely difficult situation because of the Jews. If you go through the book of Acts, everywhere Paul went, he encountered the Jews who had already been scattered during the time they were thrown away from their country and taken to Babylon. And these people were still under the law, under the law of Moses. And this, they had entangled themselves so heavily to the extent that at times they were not even be able to praise and worship this God. And Paul is writing to the Galatians and encouraging them Telling them, you can have freedom. Freedom to worship, freedom to know the word of God, freedom to understand the masses and goodness of the Lord. You do not have to entangle yourself with the law. You do not have to be circumcised. You do not have to talk about the Sabbath. You do not have to even, you know, every time go cleaning your hearts, and this is exactly what Jesus is also confronting, confronting the Pharisees, because indeed they were also giving him a lot of headache. Now, this verse talks about the fullness of time. When God Himself has now taken us from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And in the New Testament, he brings his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he can come and deliver us from the pain of going through the law. Remember that particular time the children of Israel had put themselves so deeply into this Mosaic law to the extent that at least 613 pieces of law, of laws, they were supposed to keep. 613. And he tells them there is liberty. There is freedom. And that's why this book is called The Shutter of Liberty. The Shutter of Freedom. So that you can enjoy your salvation in such a way that you are not entangled with the little small laws of Mosaic law. So when he says, but when the time had fully come, or the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the full lights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. You are going to inherit the kingdom of God. When Jesus was continuing on preaching, and if you go to Matthew 12, he encounters the Pharisees who come complaining that his disciples are breaking the law. That even they cannot touch the wheat on the field, crush it and eat. Because it is the Sabbath. And Jesus tells them, look, you do not have to complain about my disciples. I am the Lord of Sabbath. So when they are with me, they are not supposed to do some of the things you people do. And he actually calls them the blood of vipers. Pretenders. They think that they are holier than thou. Remember the Pharisee who is pray, you know, praying on one side and he looks at the other and says, you know me. 
I'm better off. I'm holier than thou. I'm holier than that guy. These are the Pharisees who have come to the church in Galatia, and now they are messing up this particular church. That's how bad the Jews were. And you know they were just going to these churches telling them you must first be circumcised. And you follow the laws of the Jews before you get salvation. And it is important for us to appreciate one thing. That when he tells them you are blood of vipers because you are not only stubborn, arrogant, proud, but also you are pulling the people who are coming to me for salvation down. And in chapter 15 of the, of the book of Matthew, the Pharisees and the teachers of law travel all the way from Jerusalem to come and confront the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because they had heard that the disciples were not washing or cleaning their hearts before they did anything, even eating. And Jesus looks at this group and wonders what, what's wrong with the Pharisees. Of course, he knew. But one thing is, he tells them they do not have to, to sanitize. They do not have to clean. Let them use their hearts. Let them eat because they are with the king. They are with the Lord. And anything that they do is the result of the fact that I've given them my presence and they are going to do according to my bidding. And it is important for us to appreciate some of these things that uh, goes on in our lives. Inside and among our friends, among our neighbors, among our relatives, there are those who want to bring you down. Not only spiritually, but also economically. And they want to actually clash you as much as they can to not only get the joy of being doing that, but also so that you do not succeed. And these are the Judaizers, the people who are bringing the Christians down because at that particular time, they thought the salvation can only come to the Jews. And when they saw the Gentiles getting the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, they were bitter. And they did not want to do that. That's where they are pulling them down. That is the background. There is the overview of the book of Galatians. So enjoy the true freedom that the Lord gives. Do not entangle yourself with unhappiness and slavery of Satan. Shatter your life in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we come to the, this particular text. We derive from it that there is a new dawn and a new hope. So our topic today is that the new dawn of hope has come. The Old Testament is gone. The agreement that was there before with the children of Israel is gone. Now God has opened his goodness and mercies to everyone, including you and me, so that we can now receive the goodness and mercies and kindness. And then, knowing that at least there is hope, then you can grow your faith and you can grow your love in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul says in Corinthians, that only three things, once God falls, the entire world gives it to his son to cleanse it so that it can be brought to him. And then Jesus and the Holy Spirit will submit themselves back to what they were into one, because right now they are in the three trinity, then they are able to do the thing they are supposed to. So four points. One is that there is the destiny and the new order. 
And this is exactly what God wants us to know. God's purpose is revealed in his perfect plan. That is the truth. His perfect plan, his purpose, not only for you and me, but also for the whole world. He has a purpose that he had in his alpha. His beginning, wherever that is. That's why we don't know what alpha is. But the beginning, the plan he had for you, when he was putting the foundations of the earth to give you hope and a future. That is the position. And we were looking at the book of Romans and we went all the way to the eighth chapter. And in it, there is the eighth chapter 28 to 30. What does God say? I foreknew you. That is during his alpha. And I predestinated you to be conformed to the likeness of my son. So that the son becomes the firstborn among many brothers, you and me. And remember, for those God for knew, he also predestined. And because of that predestination, your destiny, because the destiny of whatever you have is in his heart, he now calls you. And that is the danger. That might be, you might be one of those who God has not called or God did not know. And you have to cultivate for that knowledge of the Lord so that you can come to him. So he calls you and he justified you. Why justification? Because now he gives you the authority to call this father, father of his, the true God, the creator of heaven and earth, you can now call, you, call him Abba, father. Because of what? Because that is the love he had for you and for the world. Right from the beginning. So the destiny and the new order is that at least you are now put in the sonship. And the son has come into a heart. And he can grow you in faith and hope and love. So that you are able to walk with him all the way to the time he will give you the inheritance. And all these are within that. Be careful. It is important to, re to make sure that you receive the love and kindness and mercies and grace of the Lord. That you have. Because there is no need of you coming here every morning, hearing the word, letting the ear, one ear get that word, and then the other one just tweak. It goes. It is important for you to know that there is a destiny and the new order. And unless that new order is given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no way you are going to succeed or be victorious in this particular life and the battles you are receiving every Every day, so that you can receive the goodness and mercies and the inheritance that is set for you. The second point, there is the fulfillment of the promise. There is the fulfillment of the promise. Remember what Matthew tells us, especially in chapter 11, 13 to 15. For all the prophets, all all and the law prophesied until John the Baptist about the coming of the new order, the new dispensation, the new truth, and the new testament. That is the truth, and there is no way you can skip it. You as a human being, because you are a creation of the Almighty God. And he tells us that and if you are willing to accept, this John the Baptist is the Elijah who was to come. Remember what happened. Because there was the promise in the Old Testament that God will bring his son, the Messiah, 
And you know, Isaiah keeps on prophesying, keeps on telling people that there is one who is going to come. He will be Emmanuel so that he will be God in your life. Definitely, you require to understand very clearly this particular message of salvation because that's when God at the beginning brought it. And he had been growing it through the prophecies so that you can understand and appreciate that there is a Messiah. Elijah was to come and every family in Jerusalem and the Jewish state would actually set aside a seat so that Elijah comes and declares the Messiah is coming. Now he is telling them there is no longer any Elijah who is coming because John has come and told you to clean the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. But remember this, that the judgment will definitely be meted out on all of us. That is a fact, and you can take it to the bank. Those he finds right, he glorifies. Those he finds right, he glorifies. Those in the long side of his purpose, he throws into the everlasting condemnation and fire. The gift of the Almighty God is life everlasting. And that life that you lead in that breeze, in that heaven, in that place where he will take you, is the result of the fact that you have known him. But the others will go and stay in gnashing their teeth because indeed they will not have received the fulfillment of the promise. The purpose for which God created you is to give you hope, a future, to grow your faith and love so that at least now you can appreciate the fulfillment of this particular promise that was brought by the prophets and the law from the beginning. That is important not only to you, but also to your existence. When we come to the third point, There is indeed true and worthy of gift. What you is require, you have worked, you have known Jesus, you have known God, you have actually worked for him, you have done all those things he was supposed to do. And indeed, you have actually even done what he says in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the promise, the father of gift, the true promise of God. And if you go to Isaiah 42, 1 to 4, it says, because Jesus is being refilled through all the prophecies, through all the law, he says, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I'll put my spirit on him and he'll bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bridge bleed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he brings forth the justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till the, he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. Isaiah is simply just testifying, saying, that there is a God who will come to look at our hearts and give them peace and at least justice. God in his true mercies always looks at us and knows our weaknesses. 
He knows we are just like grass. Mafefe. Anything that goes. But you are too precious when you are breathing. You are too precious to God when you are breathing. But you are dead. You are dead. And dead. Kabisa kaput. Done. That is you who will have to go to that particular grave. Whether you like it or not. And it's not me who is saying it's the Bible. It's God himself. You actually been given the years. Once you get to 70, anything else is bonus. Remember that. Anything else is bonus. And some of us, me and Sherman, are just about to start getting to the bonus. <laughs> but my prayer is he gives me that particular list he has been talking about. He gives me that hope, that faith and love so that I can continue on working for him when this body is strong enough. So that by the time I come to the years when even when I wake up, I start cracking the, the, the knees. Once the chairman was, was telling us the truth. In the morning, somebody was sick. You, you, you just feel this leg has completely refused to, to, to walk. That is you when you get old. You know, the back has already buckled. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. You are getting old. Furthermore, your years have come. Why are you, you have been given the bonus? All right? It is important for us to appreciate this fact. You will not remain young throughout your life. You get old. And you, what will you have done for your God? What will you have done for yourself? What will have you done for your family? Because as a father, as a mother, you are supposed to direct them to us. The goodness and mercies of the Lord. Will you have thrown your children away? Will you have done things that are abomination even to the sight of the Lord? What will you have done to please the Almighty and Heavenly Father? We have the headless kingdom. That is the fourth point. Revelation 21, 1 to 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now... The dwelling of God is with men, and you will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and they are God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also a higher. That particular time when you are getting the inheritance that is in front of you for the things that you have done. Some of you will just be like what Daniel says in 12 of 3. You shine like stars for doing the bidding of God. And those who have brought many to the Lord will shine forever and ever. These are the promises of the Lord. And what does Romans 8 that bear says that these those he justified, he also glorified. He has foreknown you, he has predestined predestined you to be conformed to the likeness of his son so that his son becomes the firstborn among many brothers. He also has called you and justified you. And therefore he has given you that authority. Above it all, because of his goodness and mercies and because he has good plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans 
to give you hope and a future. That's what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. Plans to give you hope and a future. This is the future we are talking about. The endless kingdom, that kingdom you'll actually go and meet with all the type of golden beauty that God has made for you. And this stage of life will be achieved because his purpose and promises are true and what? Amen. These purposes. So you are walking in this life knowing that at least there is hope. Knowing that there is at least something that you are going to fight, you have already fought for. And you are fighting for. And he stands you strong all the way and ensures that you will start strong in him so that you can be able to appreciate his goodness and mercies. Why continue on with the pain of serving God when you can have the freedom to serve him? The freedom to always be calling him Abba Father. He's raising and calling him hallelujah every minute. Remember all those who, who are not in the book of life will be done into condemnation and the pain and the fire. And because salvation brings, you know, peace and freedom, it brings hope and joy. It brings peace and it brings the everlasting beautiful life where you will just be raising your hands, praising the almighty God with the angels because he will give you that salvation. He has already given you that salvation. But what about for those who have not received the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ? Why do you condemn yourself? Because every minute you waste is condemning yourself to that judgment and condemnation. Why? And you have that chance. Why? And you are called to come and get his goodness and mercies. Why? Why waste your time jumping up and down, doing nothing about your life everlasting? Yes, you might be looking for money. Yes, you may might be doing things to grow the country. That's all good and beautiful. But what about your life? What about the inheritance that is coming? Who are you going to cry to? Remember, the minute you shut your eyes, what you have done is what you go in front of the Almighty God. That is the truth. That is a fact. and There is nothing you can do about it. Even if this church, and remember those who are prayed for, that they can actually come to life. People stab their feet. They, you know, pierce themselves so that you come out of the deadness of death. You never. God, once he makes you shut your eyes, once you never open them until the trumpet shouts. The trumpet is sounded for the purpose. So he's asking today, perhaps you are there. Look at your life. Look at what you have done because you know yourself better. There's only a God who knows you more. He knows what you are going to do tomorrow because you do not know. But you have known what you have been doing up to this minute. It's only next minute you cannot know what you are going to do. Of course, you can imagine that you are going to actually know, going to school, going to business, and so on. But that is the destiny that God gives his people. Are you there? Are 
Are you in a situation where you want to appreciate the mercies and goodness and love and hope and faith of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you there? Just go, even when you get home, continue on meditating on the word of salvation and look at yourself and say, now I've done enough mess for myself and enough mess for my life. I want now to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ now and forevermore. Let's pray. Almighty and Heavenly Father, thank you for your word that has come forth. Thank you for your people for listening. Put this word into Almighty God, their mind and their heart, Almighty God, so they can continue on meditating on it day and night so that they can appreciate your goodness and mercies that you bring through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for holding us strong, enabling us, Almighty and Heavenly Father, to appreciate your goodness and mercies. For those who are not saved, talk to them in that very soft voice that, Almighty God, you approach your people so that they can appreciate your goodness and mercies and come to you so that they are going to be saved. And you can put them in the book of life so that they are not condemned for life. Thank you for everything because you are God and you are merciful. For this we pray in the very mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Bro. 